Harry's wife. Clarkson's response shows they'll never want reconciliation. Reconciliation is no good to a narcissist. Your defeat, your submission, you being conquered, is what matters. A narcissist will speak of reconciliation because the facade dictates it. What the narcissist really wants is for you to give in, give up, go away, give the narcissist what we are entitled to. Reconciliation suggests a meeting of minds, a meeting of positions, compromise. We don't compromise. The appearance of compromise is quite simply the fact that there is a confluence between what we want and what you want. We don't make a compromise from our perspective. Of course, certain narcissists will talk about compromise. I've compromised and so must you. But it isn't really. We use the wording in order to try and lull you into a sense of doing what we want. This is why negotiating with a narcissist is a waste of time. If you find yourself in a situation where you're involved in some form of necessity of getting something out of a narcissist, you are best served either writing the matter off and then being able to impose a total no-contact regime and recognising that that is worth its weight in gold. Or, if you must get something, access to children, or preventing the narcissist from accessing children, access to money, spousal support, child support, the return of property, whatever it might be, if the law gives you a cause of action and the evidence supports you, then use the law and its teeth against the narcissist. Sure, the narcissist will wriggle, the narcissist will lie, the narcissist will prevaricate, the narcissist will attempt to mediate and will attempt to reconcile with you. But it isn't actually genuine. It's all done about what? Getting control over you. Where a narcissist comes seeking reconciliation, what they really mean is, although they don't know it, where they're an unaware narcissist, is they want control over you. They want to drink deep of your fuel and possibly also acquire some character traits and residual benefits. I could have told you that there is no genuine reconciliation wanted by Harry's wife, even though she'll talk about such terms and wanting an apology and such like. But her response, and it is her response, although it's put as a joint one, to what Jeremy Clarkson has issued demonstrates quite clearly that Reconciliation is not ever wanted. Clarkson, of course, issued a opinion, an opinion piece which offended Harry's wife because it insulted her. It also offended a lot of other people. Not that Clarkson cares, he couldn't give a fig for that. But it was necessary for him to issue an apology because certain powers of B, whose continued support and succour he required, and therefore he deemed it appropriate to go along the route of issuing a so-called apology. And as I've mentioned in parts past him, it isn't actually an apology at all, and he's continuing to take the piss. Nevertheless, on the face of it, he uses the words sorry and mea culpa, and that it's from the balls of his feet to the follicles on his hair, follicles in his, uh, on his head, that he's issuing an apology. And most people would say, okay, this is typical Clarkson's style, but he said sorry. And he also wrote to you privately, saying sorry. The article has come down. The Sun have apologised. There you are. You've got your apology. And then what ought Harry's wife to have done? Well, there could have been silence. She could have asserted control by saying nothing privately saying, look at this snivelling worm, he's apologised, his article's come down, he's in trouble with Amazon, there we are, that'll do us, thank you very much. People supported us, it actually helped us with him coming out with those comments. Unfortunately, for those that routinely criticise me, it enabled more people to go, no, 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 that's too far. And therefore, it engendered greater support for me. I'm ahead here, let's not fuck it up, stay silent. And that's one option. 
She could have asserted control from a position of withdrawal, having received his apology and allowed the world to see that Clarkson is the one that have apologised, albeit in his tongue-in-cheek style, but he has nevertheless, and that he received condemnation from many quarters, including that of his own daughter. That would be a victory. But Harry's wife didn't do that. Well, she could have perhaps shown some grace. Oh, I hear you say. Harry's wife show grace? Well, indeed. But she could have done. She could have issued a statement saying that we acknowledge and accept the apology of Jeremy Clarkson and we're now putting this awful, awful incident behind us. She could also have included some sanctimonious observation about wanting the world to be a better place and how they're the duke and ditchers of tackling misinformation, albeit actually they spread it. But they could have shown grace and she could have done so in accepting the apology through a statement and moving on from it. People would have said, look, she's taken the high ground. That would have allowed her to assert control. It would have managed her facade. People actually would have thought, oh, well, yeah, he's in the wrong. She, he's apologised. She's accepted it. She's moving on. Fair play to her. Of course, those of you in the know through my work would be able to interpret precisely what she's doing there, but the vast majority of people would look at it and say, well, she's being reasonable and fair. He was out of order. He called her nasty names. He's apologised. She's accepted it. And she's turning the other cheek and showing that she's the better person by moving on. But she didn't do that, did she? She didn't say silent. She didn't gracefully accept the apology. And here's why. She wants it all. She wants Clarkson crawling on the ground, apologising, after having been stripped of his role by Amazon, having been dismissed by the Sun, having been evicted from his house, and roundly tarred and feathered by all around him. She wants him snivelling with an apology. She wants the world to condemn him. She wants the world to recognise that she is right and he is wrong. She wants to destroy what he has achieved, because what he represents is the enemy, forthright, entertaining, popular, but outspoken. All the things that her narcissism causes her to see as a threat to control, the way that she has been forged as the pseudo-empath, that people like him, they're crass, bold, vulgar, toxic masculinity, leader of the incels, all the very things that Harry's wife does not stand for. And she wants to bring down a chief proponent of that edifice. Accordingly, that means she issues a statement which neither accepts what he has to say, nor acknowledges it in a favourable way, but simply states that he is issuing hate rhetoric. And that it's not a one-off instance. This makes her look churlish. This makes her look sour. But we all know that she is. She's doing this because she doesn't want reconciliation. She doesn't want to smooth things over with Jeremy Clarkson. She wants him crushed. She doesn't want to reconcile with the royal family. She wants them to come on hands and knees begging for her to be queen and that her, for her to show them the right way of living. For them to admit that everything they've ever done in their centuries-old existence is completely wrong. It isn't because she sits there with a the mindset of wanting to destroy everything. Few narcissists actually operate that way. But the fact is, is that when someone starts to show what she perceives as weakness, an apology that's not an apology from Clarkson, King Charles seemingly wanting to offer the hand of friendship to resolve matters in a peace summit before his coronation, which of course is purely for selfish reasons, Harry's wife's narcissism senses weakness and says, let's go for more. Let's humiliate. Let's grind them down. And the way that she has responded to what Clarkson has done demonstrates that any noises that she makes about reconciliation are quite simply a load of horse shit. She is a narcissist. She does not want reconciliation. She wants victory. Subconsciously, she wants total hegemonic control over all of those around her. She wants to drink deep of the fuel of those that are crushed beneath her cloven hoofs. She wants those character traits and residual benefits. And her narcissism, when it senses that it can obtain that and more and more and more from whoever she's dealing with, it will drive her on to do so.
And of course, with that single-minded pursuit come the collateral consequences of gain, so that her response to the Clarkson apology makes her look ungrateful, mealy-mouthed, sour, and churlish. There, of course, will be a number who will think to themselves, well, she's quite right because he's been a miserable, horrible fucker to her, so she's quite right to respond in that way. But a cleverer narcissist, more astute narcissist, would have utilised his apology to her advantage and not pursued the additional aspects. Instead, they would have dealt with it gracefully and in a way which enables her to take the moral high ground and maintain it. Of course, she doesn't do that because her form of narcissism doesn't operate that way. But for all of you to understand, it's this. The way that she has responded to Clarkson's apology demonstrates that reconciliation is spoken about, but is never, ever genuinely wanted by her. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.